Hey everybody, welcome back to Indicted TV. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Quick shout out to my sponsors, Royalty Honey. Keep it hard, guys. And if you don't want to be on my show and you want to stay home, make sure you hire attorney Rosenberg. On today's episode, we have Karen. Hi, Karen. Welcome to Indicted TV. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Um... So tell me, Karen, where are you from? Where did you grow up? You know, the inside of your house, mom, dad, brothers, sisters, things like that. Uh, so pretty much um, grew up here in Southern California uh, with my mom, my dad, and a brother. Um, pretty much a uh, pretty loving home. My parents were married the whole time until my mom passed away. Mm. Um, my brother was the one that's been in and out of prison since I was very young. He's older than you. He's older. Than, he's four years older than me. And then he he passed away, I think, about... Um, it's been a year now, I oh, think. And he passed away in prison as well. But, um, yeah, that's another story. <laughs> I mean, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that yeah. if you're comfortable with it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so tell me, you graduated high school, you graduated school. Tell me about yeah, so you know, I, your teenage have, years. So or did you ever get in trouble? Um, so not really. I was always, like, the good one. My brother was the one that was bad, you know, in and out and like getting in trouble. Um, but pretty much I had a, a cool childhood. Like like I said, my parents were very loving. They were together forever, supporting us, um, taking care of us. I went to school. I graduated high school. My dad right away was like, you have to do something. You have to do something with your life. Like you can't just stay home and chill out. You have mm -hmm. to do something. So he got me like into a medical assistant program at first. So that's what I did. Like for the first eight years, I was a medical assistant. So okay. I was kind of in the medical field since I graduated high school. Um, and then after that, I was like, oh, I need to do something more. You like, got a little bored. Yeah, like I need to make more money. Like this just isn't it. So that's when I went to nursing school. Okay, so you're a nurse. So I'm a nurse and okay. I'm an LVN, a licensed vocational nurse. Um, how many years does it take or how does that work? So actually for LVN, it was only like a year that we did. We still have to, you know, take the um, state boards for it and everything. So we're like right underneath a registered nurse, which is an RN. Yes. Um, but we still, you know, have a lot of responsibilities. Of course. We, we do a lot. And that's where everything all started after that. Yeah. <laughs> when you say everything started, what is what does that mean? So basically, that's when like, um, my career started. Okay, my career as a nurse started. Um, so a little bit about that. When I first graduated, it was hard. It's a hard market as well, you know, to get a job as a new nurse. Nobody wants to hire you when you're brand new. Everybody wants experience. So I was applying everywhere, everywhere um, through agencies, registries, everything. And the first people that called me was from a prison, from oh. a, a correctional institution in Lancaster. So that's what led you to be a prison nurse. Yes. It's not that you planned. No. Because I was going to ask, like, what led no. you to work you know, no, a, a it wasn't like my first choice. Like, oh, I can't wait to be a prisoner. So okay. it wasn't and, like that. And how did you feel like, you know, how did you feel like when you, you know, when they called you and you were like, okay, this is your opportunity. How did you feel? And like, did you tell your parents? Yes. Yeah, so it was, it wasn't like the greatest opportunity because I kind of knew what it was, you know, having a family member that's been in out of prison, the stories he would tell me. So it wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to go be a prisoner. But it was more like the pay was excellent. I'm sure. It was paying a lot more. So when I got there, you know, I, we go through like a shorter orientation than you would if you were actually hired through the state. It's a shorter process because they're in crisis. They need nurses and they don't have so the, that many. So be the best place to start getting your training as far as like when you're first starting to be a nurse would it be in prison no absolutely <laughs> not absolutely I not just, i just mm -mm. mean to have it in the record no? yeah no okay so that's kind of why i quit that that job because okay so that was again fresh out of school i'm a brand new nurse i start you're my young. job i'm young i'm probably like well, maybe not that young, probably like 24, 25, 26. I don't pretty know. young. You know, you're so, pretty. You're small. <laughs> so, you know, I go in and it's a whole new world. A whole new world. Completely <laughs> just nothing like I expected. You know, I what, come what in. What did you expect? Well, I expected it, you know, to be structured, to be rules, but not the way like it came out so you know i walk in you know i'm getting a tour and you know some of the nurses that have been there for a while you know they start telling me like the real get down because you go through the orientation with like the prison and how how's the orientation like well, tell us you know basically they're telling they give you a whistle 
That's that your lifeline. The oh. whistle is your lifeline. Like if anything happens, you blow the whistle. So that's kind of scary to know like, okay, this is it. Like this, this is, is what's, what's going to me. Supposed to save my life. You know, it's kind of like, like a joke kind of, you know, but that's what it was. And, you know, what to do if something, someone approaches you, you know, where you, where you report it and, you know, how to, you know, do things like that. So that's what they teach you in the orientation. But then when you actually get to like your uh, orientation with the nurse, like when they start to train you like this is on the job now this is what you're gonna do it was a whole different get down and do you have to take a uh, like physical training no oh hell no <laughs> no mm -mm. not this time around okay. i remember like the next times yeah we'll, we'll it was get, a little we'll, bit you know, more we'll get there but this one no no none of that it was more you blow your whistle and that yeah. was that was it so it was <laughs> You know, that that's in the back of your mind the whole time. Like, okay, I got a whistle. I got a whistle. But, okay, thank God I never had to use the whistle. But, um, yeah, so I get there and the nurse, you know, is walking me around, you know, to the first, like, housing unit. We're going to give meds because that's what we were doing, you know, passing meds. Um, and she tells me, because you have to have an officer escort you. Mm -hmm. So there's an officer, but he's not, like, right next to us. He's, like, kind of Just ahead of us and stuff like that. And she's like, you know, don't talk to the officers. Don't walk with them. And I was like, why? And she says, oh, because then the inmates think that you're with them, like that you're cool with them, and then they're going to target you. So I was like, oh, my God. But in training, they're telling us, you know, the officer, he's the ones that's going to take care of you. Like if anything happens, they're the ones. So now I'm like conflicted, you know, and then, she, then again, we're walking by the inmates. Don't look at them either. Don't make eye contact. Don't engage in conversation. So I was like. Oh, my gosh. So, so many things are just going through your head. Like, okay, what am I doing here? Like, how am I supposed to make it through the first day, basically? Because that's how it was. But basically, you kind of get accustomed to that. Um, don't, don't be so friendly, basically, is what they're telling. Don't be so friendly with either one. You can't be friendly with can't the trust officers. Of these and you really can't be friendly with the inmates either because they're, they're watching you. Your every move, your every step that you're taking, your the way you walk, your demeanor, your character. I think they smell the fear in you as well, oh, like no. when you're walking through. <laughs> every single thing, you know. And I'm, I remember when this, when this, when I first worked at that prison, um, it must have been like 16 years ago. So it was back in the day when it was like super overcrowded, very you know, overpopulated in the prison. So even in the housing units that had the bunks. So you were walking into just inmates all over the place. So it was, it was scary. It was really scary. Um, I remember too, um, like the PCs would have to come up separate and, you know, chained up. And I'd be like, well, why? Like, why are they coming up that way? Like I was, I, I would ask a lot of, I ask a lot of questions. So no, I would you ask, have to. I would ask a lot of questions like, oh, because he's a child molester or because he did this. And because and I'd be like, oh my God. And I would have to go check their blood sugar, but I didn't want to, but you have to. Yeah, it's your job. You have no choice. Yeah. So yeah, so then, um, you know, okay. So that was like the first few days. And then after that, you know, I did have an inmate come up to me and he says, hey, I need your help. I'm sick. And I was like, oh my God, what's wrong? Wrong, you know, like right away the nurse in me, what's wrong? And then um, I got chewed out that day. They were like, don't you ever approach them. Because we were through, we were, I was behind in the medical and he was outside. But I right away, I was like, what's wrong? And she's like, don't you ever do that. We don't do that here. He knows the routine. He knows the rules. Put in a slip and we call him unless it's an emergency, unless he's, you know, Bleeding falling out or anything. Yeah. Like, you don't do that. They're just testing you. Facts. And I was like. I, I, you know, my instinct was just like, oh, my God, what's wrong? And she was like, absolutely not. Like, you don't do that. Like, you're putting your life and our life in danger. And I was like, OK, noted. <laughs> now mm -hmm. I know. But now yeah, you know. so that was like my first little rodeo when I first started. So then after that, I was like, you know, I don't think this is for me because this is my first job. I'm really trying to learn. I'm really trying to do hands on, you know, n bedside nursing, you know, to care for my patients. And this just isn't it. Mm -hmm. So after a few months, I quit that job and went somewhere else. A different prison? No, I went completely to a different job. Because okay. I was just like, this isn't for me. Okay. It's just not going to work. So I went to like a nursing home and did that whole get down. And, you know, it was it was different again. It was a whole different um, environment. And I feel like I got a lot of experience there. A lot of my nursing, um, you know, that I things that I learned hands on. So it was okay. But it was always going back you because you kind of you, you probably do you feel like you're like okay like at the moment while you were there you probably didn't think like ah 
okay, I could do this. Because you're like terrified, you're just learning. But once you were gone, you were like, yo, maybe I could do like, this. Like, hey, it wasn't that bad. Like, it, uh-huh, like the money's good. Like, mm-hmm. I got this. Like, you probably, w- maybe you needed that little brick to like catch yourself. Like, all right, you know, get your big girl yeah. pants on, <laughs> you know, tighten up. Like, yeah. I got this. Like, mm-hmm. I have a brother that's, you know, been in this situation. Like, I'm not no weak bitch, you know? Like, I got this. Yeah. Is that how you felt? Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong, like, that first time that I worked at the prison, my parents were terrified, Mm-mm. you know, worried, they were very concerned, especially because there's no communication at that point, you know, it's not Once like they go could call you. me and mm-hmm. say, hey, the, something's wrong with the kids, or this, that, it was no communication, we kind of had to do, like, email kind of system, okay. and, you know, this, I'm, talk, I'm telling you, it's, like, 15 years back, so email is still kind of slow, mm-hmm. you know, so it was concerns, and so that was over with, so then... The next time, uh, now now at this point, I'm living in Arizona. Um, I moved out there, you know, I was still married and things like that. Um, it was a whole different ball game at that point. I felt like I was a little more confident. I was older, more mature, you know, had more experience as a nurse. Um, and just the whole get down was a little bit different. Than Arizona. California. Yeah, it was just a little bit different. You know, same thing, same politics, same rules. But I just felt like my whole headset, like, mindset everything was a little bit different at that point you feel more comfortable more comfortable so again the money was really good and at this point in Arizona they were offering like 12 hour shifts and so I was like okay cool that's I only got to work three days a week and you know so they kind of like entice you because again it's through agencies because they're in such great need because nobody wants to work at the prisons nobody does It, it it's just scary It's scary for everybody. So again, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I think I'm good now is what I told myself. Yeah, I think I'm good. I'm going to go back. So I end up going back again. And again, at this at this point in Arizona, they did do like the um, uh, physical training at this point. Like they teach you how to get you know, away from them or get them off of you. Like if they're approaching you. Like the put, whole self-defense you put stuff. You uh-huh. your neck. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've seen that. That. <laughs> that. that whole, you know, we went through that whole thing. And um, so, yeah, it was a little bit different. I felt like I got a little bit more trained. And again, I just, I think my mindset was just a little bit different too. So I go in and um, it was, it was okay. It was not that bad. It wasn't I, that bad. You say that like, uh, like, tell me why you're smiling though. <laughs> well... Like, what is going through your head as, like, right now you're, like, trying to think about what you want to say? Like, like what is, like, what are the flashbacks? Well, because, again, on the inside, it nothing changed. It's still prison. It's yeah. still the inmates. It's still the inmates targeting you. It's still the inmates uh, trying to get in your head, trying to figure those out. those are good, too, huh? <laughs> but, but, you know, you know what, what's crazy was so were the officers. It was almost like a competition. It was a competition between officers, inmates, everybody. And I would always think to myself, like, why are the officers this way? Like, they get to walk out of here and do whatever they want, you know, with whoever they want. But then at the same time, I always thought, I think it's just a competition. Mm-hmm. Like, they, there's Pride. so much testosterone in there. There's so much going on. Like, they want to be the, you know, one up on everybody. So I could get, I, I understood that part, but it was, it was kind of annoying. It to was, you, it's cause it's yeah, you're, you're a girl. it was annoying, you know, cause we just were trying to get in there, do our job and get out, go in there, do our job and get out. But yeah, there was a lot of, uh, so you're so basically, you're saying like, it was always like the guards and the inmates were like super trying to flirt, not even like talk, just, just like get conversation, like try to, you know, fish things out of you, like trying to know who you are. Are you married? Are you this? Do you do that? Like just all the time. It just felt like everybody was trying to know who you are. What do you do outside of here? And, you know, just try to get in your head. It's hard, huh? Everybody was trying to I'm sure to do it was that. extremely hard for you. Um, It was. It really was. You know, I mean. You, when you work there, you're not trying to, like, put makeup on. You're not trying to, like, do your hair. You're not trying yeah, because to put cologne. Like, you couldn't wear, like, nothing like this. You couldn't wear, you know, bracelet, nothing, because nothing they can grab and okay, get a hold of sense. you. Your hair can't be down. It has to be up In because the bun. they can uh, grab you. Um, so you couldn't wear makeup, but you just chose not no, to? No, I feel like, like, because it was all girls in, our, in the medical unit that I worked at. Um, we just didn't. We just didn't want Yo, I'm to. I'm trying to look the we didn't, worst. Yeah, I, at least I can speak for myself. Like I didn't really want the attention. I guess like it wasn't. You don't want the attention yeah. from anybody. Working, like you don't want to lose your job. You don't. You don't because 
you don't when you get busted like that in a prison like at work you go to prison too Did like you, you see go that to happen? jail yeah we would see people get walked out all the time and then well we wouldn't see them at first like what happened what happened and then you know everybody would start talking oh it's because of this oh it's because of that like you always Here. found out what it yeah, was super yeah 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 you know but it was mostly like um nurses bringing in things or the officers bringing in stuff yeah things like yeah. that mostly but then you would also hear like the inmates like they would tell us the stories too, yeah yeah they like want, they'll be like hey let me go to the nurse just so yeah. i could just go chop it up for yeah. a second they would do that all the time all the like time. on the daily huh all day long the porters everybody everybody and any any chance that they would get it oh, was it there i mean you know yes and no you know, I know you what had you mean, to, we had to keep like our our guard up too but you it felt to. like it was with everybody everybody it was a completely different scene like i one time okay so when you work in there like you have to count all your sharps what are sharps sharps so your needles okay. your scissors your scalpels anything because we had any everything that we basically needed for an emergency situation got it because a lot of things happen in prison so we had to keep all of that was counted every single thing every single thing so every morning and every night before we went home we had to count everything um so you have diabetics you have to poke them give them their insulin so every morning i would i knew how many diabetics i had so i knew how many potentially how many people i needed to give insulin to so let's say i had 10 diabetics i would grab 10 needles so 10 sharps um, I had an inmate, so I would put them in my little medical cart, you know, and I would have them come to the window and I would check. So I, I remember this one day, I don't remember why I walked away to get something and I had the line. There was a line outside of the medical. So I walk back to grab something. I come back, but I hadn't locked my cart. Mm. So when I come back, my drawers are open. My sharps are gone. Dang. I'm stressed out because I because I at this point no one in the line everyone's gone because they saw because they knew so I was like oh man so right away I called the officer I mean there was supposed to be an officer there but I, you know I don't remember why we walked away and came right back I'm talking seconds like we walked away came back yeah and my stuff was gone and then um so what then, happened to you so right away I'm thinking I'm gonna get fired I'm thinking the worst because I didn't know it was like was that like your first incident that happened to you? Yeah, that happened like that I you know that I didn't know what was going to happen. I had no idea what was going to happen. So then um the lieutenant comes like everybody and <sighs> the whole yard shut down. Everything is shut down for hours because they're looking for them. They're calling people to bring in, you know, bring them back, bring them back. Of course no one's bringing them yeah. back. So it just so happened that, okay, so that was during the week. I don't know what day it was, but that weekend was supposed to be a food food visit that weekend so then um we're just waiting waiting basically because i'm just sitting there everything shut down i'm just sitting there like why didn't i lock it because that's yeah, that's my bag yourself. you know that's yeah. my bag because i should have locked it you don't walk away unless you lock it so then um finally someone comes up and was like oh yeah well we know who did it they actually popped the door with their id as soon as you walked away they popped the door came in and then just took your stuff but he's not talking, like he's not saying who has it, nothing. So I was still like, oh, it's still, I'm still in trouble. Like it's still no way. So wait, to let, be me, found. let me, let me, let me, let me, because so with that, like he, so inmates came and said who it was. How does that even work? Like, is that even allowed or you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to be doing that? Well, absolutely not. But there's like snitches. Somebody like was snitching on okay. that guy. Yeah. So then they like find him and they're asking him, you know, of course he's denying it. And that was awesome, Mac Becker. Yeah, and, <laughs> and he's like, no, well, I don't know. Well, because I don't know, you know. I yeah, don't know yeah, I'm just, I'm just making but, stories, guys. But but I know what I do know for a fact is they would sell them for like three hundred dollars or whatever it was, like a ridiculous amount no, each I, syringe. I so can that's, imagine that was the thing. I think that was like his little hustle. I don't know, but that was his point, like to go sell them, and it was like ten of them. The brand new, come up. brand new needles. So, you know, of course they're out there already. And um, so then they said like, okay, if you don't bring back, they're telling everybody, if you guys don't bring them back, the 10 um, the food visit is canceled. Oh. So at this point now, everybody's involved now. You know, all the, all the homies are like pissed. Everyone's involved now. And they're like, you know what? It, somebody better come up with 10. Throw them on the floor. Somebody better come up with 10 and bring them up there. And then sure enough, that's what happened. I mean, they bring them to me, you know, so I can like dispose of them. But they're like rusted, 
old needles. Oh. Like I'm thinking like these are not the ones I had, but hey, I don't ten. care. I'm taking the 10. We're throwing them, you know, disposing of them. And then that was that. But yeah, it was that was like wow. pretty bad. Yeah, that was it was my bad. You know, I, yeah, I messed up. Extreme. But I don't remember. It, it had to have been something. Something happened because I, I remember me and the officer like. Hey, Went at least, back and hey, at least they listened. Back. Like they wanted their food visits. Oh yeah, <laughs> they wanted oh, their yeah. food visits. <laughs> yeah, so they were like, Mm-mm, "Bring them back." So we did. We we counted the ten. We disposed of them, and then everything went back to normal. Back to did you get a write up? No. Oh good. No, because they brought them back. But yeah, I mean, I was still, <laughs> I was still like super stressed out after that. Like I made sure, like some, mm-hmm. like either the officer stays there. You know, of course, I would always lock my cart after yeah, that but well, you had to you had to go bad. through something in order to like yeah. get your like tighten up you know yeah. like be the same yeah these fools are fast oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but i was just like shocked like how did he even get in here like that what if something happened to me you know just things that go through your head of but, course scary situation but thank god like it wasn't it was just they they just stole my syringes <laughs> and um yeah. how long how long were you a prison nurse so i feel like because that's in arizona was that the only time you've ever how long how long were you a prison nurse for did i is that what i just asked yeah okay um i think on and off i've been a prison nurse for maybe like five six years okay so not on and off not consecutively but it's been i always took breaks i feel like mentally you just gotta it takes a a toll on you yeah it does it really does i'm sure um what would what would you say was like the craziest thing like you've seen? So okay, that and again that was an Arizona prison. Um, I remember, you know, our, our daily routine. We would um, that morning we were doing pill call, but for some reason we had to go down to the housing units to do it. So we did that sometimes too. We had the the you know medical where they would come up and they would get their pills or whatever. But for some reason this day we had to go down to the housing unit. So. I remember I was with the officer, you know, getting escorted down to the housing unit. And it just felt tense, weird that day. Like, I remember just looking around and it was a big yard and everybody was just kind of like in little groups, little groups, little groups. And, you know, everybody, there was like the the wreck where everybody works out. Nobody was working out. They were just kind of standing around staring at me. And I was like, this is weird. Like, it, yeah, like it just felt very tense. So I remember it was kind of a long walk. So we're walking. And then I think the officer kind of like noticed it too. And then he said, Elias, because, you know, they call you by your last name, Elias. He said, how many uh, people do you have? How many uh, pills you got? And I said, I don't know. Like, I got a few. And he was like, no. He's on no. Get back now. Go. Go. And I was like, oh, my God, because we used to put everything, like, in a bag and take it down, you know? So then I would just, like, held on to my bag because I didn't know someone was going to come up and snatch it. Like, I had no idea. I have, like, you know, narcotics, like, pain pills and things like that in my bag. So I remember just grabbing my bag, and I turned around, and I started... I didn't run because you're not supposed to run you don't run in prison you walk fast (laughs) so I remember like I just grabbed my bag and I turned around and I just started walking so fast and I remember making eye contact with the guard to open the door for me so I remember he opened the door and I walked as fast as I could in I remember as soon as the door closed like everything popped off on the yard the yard just it was a big ass Um. riot that had happened um but I have a feeling like they already like they knew what was happening because for some reason they had us go down number one and number two like like um like like the dog units everybody was already like on standby so it's like did you, did you ever think like what are these guards like the the higher art people like if they know what's gonna happen like why would they put you in those situations I mean, yeah. did you ever question any kind of those we, things or we question a lot of things when we work there but you just don't say anything you really don't. I mean, you talk amongst each other. Like, we could ask those questions, but you, no, really you don't know the answer answers to that. Yeah. yeah. And you just know, like, they know they've been there longer. Um, but basically, he was just like, go back now. Like, he knew yeah. it was about to go down. and then I did. And then I'm telling you, it's like, as soon as I heard the door close behind me, like, the whole yard popped off. Like, you could see them. I, I wonder if the guys waited for you to... I think so. Get to, to be honest, I think they did. Because I'm telling you, as soon as I, I walked through the door, the door closed behind me and the whole yard just popped off. You know, they're throwing the gas, they're throwing all, you know, mm-hmm. everything. And, you know, 
worried. I make it into medical and I was like, oh my God. And everybody's already rushing in. The, you know, the other units are coming in. They're coming in with the dogs, you know, letting the dogs loose. So now... That's so they let the, they let the dogs Oh, loose. yeah. The dogs are loose and they're just going at it. And, you know, they're throwing like the gas and everything. And then um, like it last minutes, it doesn't even last that long. It lasts yeah. minutes. And then after the, that, we're grabbing the backpacks. We're Because we don't know what happened. We have no idea the severity of it. What are the backpacks? With all the emergency equipment that we have to carry down. Because these fools now, are going to come in messed up. Because now we have to either go get them um on stretchers wheelchairs we're taking wheelchairs down we're taking the backpacks with gauze and you know saline and everything to patch people up to and do you have to wear a mask like we didn't so we're down there and we're like dying too just as bad as they yeah, are i was gonna say so we i remember that day they called the rest of the medical units from the other from the other units right so they all get there too and then they're all so we have to split like people go down and some people stay up so that day i was like i'm staying i'm not going like i was already out there i'm staying here <laughs> so half of the un, you know half of medical goes down and the same like they're bringing people up but when they come up to us i mean you could still smell you could still smell it's it just, you still yeah. feel it you're still coughing you're still gasping for air just as bad as they are because they're full of it. They're full and they're trying to wash up. But I guess when they put water, it reactivates it or something and it starts to burn again. I mean, it's pretty It's pretty intense. And you got people with eyes busted. You got people with, um, like, I guess they had, like, the so the lock in the socks and they're just busting people with it. So they have knots on their head. They're bleeding. Um, the dog bites. I mean, you had everything going wow, on. so the dogs actually do oh, yeah. bite them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. They're they're breaking skin. Like they're coming up bleeding. Like mostly like in their back of their legs, on their butts, on their back. Because they're on the floor most of the time when they or they're resisting or they're they still fighting or whatever it is. So we're so that's what we're dealing with now in the medical. So at that point I'm like, I probably should have gone down because you got more fresh air out there than in here. But yeah, it was pretty bad. Once they come up and you have them like that, it's pretty bad because you get the same effect of the gas. Wow. Yeah. With no mask. No mask. No mask. Yeah. That is intense. It, it was pretty intense. Yeah, we did we did that a few times. Um, fights. Not. I remember riots. It was only that one that I saw. Your six years, yeah. But um, fights, we had fights all the time. Like on the, the daily, time. huh? Yeah, overdoses was a big thing, too. Tell me about the overdoses. So the overdoses that, that I came into contact with was um, uh, heroin, heroin. Um, at that time, they were doing a lot of spice, too. I don't know if you know what the that is. The fake weed? Yeah. But it was, like, fairly new back then, I think. So people really didn't know how to use it. So we would have um, we would have to come down and just, Wait, like, evaluate. Wait, they used to shoot the... No, no, no. They just, would, like, just smoke, smoke it. it. Yeah. yeah. But you would have, like, the inmates, like, under the bunks or just, like, cr going crazy, like, hitting. Like, we just didn't know what was wrong with them. Or they would just fall out, like, things like that. So we would have to go and yeah, get Yeah, because that spice is intense. I've yeah. smoked that shit, like, twice oh. when I first got out. Like, in 2012, <laughs> right? Yeah. I had never heard of oh, that before. Oh, my goodness. No, that shit is intense. Like, I forgot. I didn't even know where I was at. Like... Yeah, so you got people, like, just with erratic behavior, aggressive. We would have to, like... um, um handcuff them to the wheelchairs like because they would just be going yeah because you're a small crazy. girl yeah so we would have to go down there and then bring them up and just kind of give them water um until they, until they would just calm down yeah and but the, the overdoses okay. like with heroin um we would have to narcan them so we would have to again you come down with the with the backpacks you come down with the water because you just don't know when What's they happening? call when they call for you you have to come down with everything so we would come down, like someone had the Narcan, someone had the syringes, like, and the backpacks and wheelchair, and we would just run down. Like, we didn't know what we were going into wow. until we would get there. Yeah. That's scary. Well, You're you missed those days. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like, it was a good experience, you know, like, for me, like, I felt like I learned a lot. You know, you learn to think fast in those situations because literally you don't know what you're walking into. Yeah. No clue until you get there. 
And like they say, oh, it's possible this, possible that. Okay, but well, they don't know. But they don't know. Nobody knows until you get down there. And with the overdoses, yeah. do they do they normally die, or you bring you brought? Did you ever bring one back? Yeah, most of them. Okay, most of them we were bringing them back um, with the Narcan one or two. You know, shots. We had the shots over there. We didn't have the spray like they do now. Which yeah, I was is gonna so say much easier? more convenient and faster uh, over there. Cause obviously, we, it's a different time. <clears throat> yeah, and we couldn't really draw them until we were there. Like draw up the Narcan until we were there physically evaluating the patient and we knew it was an overdose damn so you still had to take some time yes so then fools could die literally yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, but wow. while i was there nobody thing odd died. right nobody yeah, died on them. your watch yeah and when they come back like how do they behave i've never seen i never so, experienced you know i i, yeah. I i've never been a so it was crazy because user. okay so i remember um that happened one time and we you know we narcan the guy it was a young guy and it's a lot of times the, it's the, the younger, younger ones. ones the youngsters yeah that are just aren't supposed to be doing drugs to begin with because they're not allowed to or whatever but they do and um i just remember coming back another day like a week later and he was like uh nurse elias and i was like what because i'm pissed because you know all of that's paperwork it's yeah like more well, you're, you're making me work yeah. these young fools need to get together you yeah. guys because you guys are <laughs> So I remember just coming out and he was like, Nurse Elias. And I was like, what? And he says, I just want to tell you, thank you for saving my life. And Aye. my mom, my mom's very grateful to you nurses. And I was like, well, it wasn't just me. It was all of us, you know, I'm like, but don't do stupid shit like that no more. Like, what are you thinking? Like, what if you die and your mom not going on? And I was like, Cause okay, your mom too. that's enough. Yeah. I was like, all right, but well, that's enough. But yeah, you, was, have, you can't, you have to catch yourself yeah, as well. Cause I was just like, like, like right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even fucking <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, you think about that, like, People die like yeah. all the time, like a lot, a lot. It happens a lot. And well, that guy happened like we brought him back basically with the Narcan. Wow. Yeah, he probably would have died. Mm -hmm. That's intense. Yeah. Like to be like going through the whole process off fast. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's just all hands on, all hands on. Everybody's in there. Everybody's helping. The officers are in there too. They're trained just like you guys. Yeah. To, to be hands on and do all of that. Yeah. And with the nurses, is there always, it's, it's, it's more of ladies, huh? Mostly. Mostly there's more women than there is men as nurses. But yeah, we had a few men and it helped. It helped a lot. Yeah. Because yeah, of the, you know, male authority vibes. Yeah, authority. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, because guys, obviously, not even just in there, but even out here, like, hey, they're manipulated and they want to get something, they're going to do what they want, what they have mm -hmm. to do. What was the craziest thing somebody told you, like, try to get into your head? Well, I feel like it was on a daily basis, you know, but mostly how they always try to start off with you is like, oh, Nurse Elias, can I get a Band-Aid? Like, that was the <laughs> one thing they would always ask you, and you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to give them a Band-Aid. Like, what the fuck do you need a Band-Aid Yeah, for you don't need a Band-Aid, like, but that's how they would start, like, you know, kind of their little conversations and, oh, well, can I get this or can I get that? Nope, I don't have no Band-Aids. I don't have nothing for you. If you need anything, you got to put in a slip. You got to put in a slip. That's just how it went. Like, that's what you had to do. And then you kind of start speaking to them like them, kind of. Or or did you just have to keep it like nurse vocabulary? No, there was no really rules you know about I mean? that. Yeah, no. I mean, everybody, like, everywhere that I always worked at, they always told me, like, just be respectful. Of course. Um, don't, don't think that you're better than anybody. Yeah. Don't talk down to anybody. And... I mean, we would see the officers. The officers were very respectful to them, mm -hmm. too. So it's not like we were trying to be, like, badasses or anything. Because we weren't. We were just there to help them. and Your job to, is to help them. And trying to leave out of there in Alive. one piece as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, so that uh -huh. was... <laughs> <laughs> what was the sweetest, you, the sweetest thing you saw? Um... If you, I mean, if there is a, I mean, I always like thought it was like a trip, like to see, see them like with their little pets and stuff. They would have like, oh, they have pets. Yeah. Like they would have like lizards or like pigeons, brats and stuff like that kind of weird thing. But a, they would just have like pets and it almost, it almost brings you to like a human side, you know, like, oh, they have feelings too you know Most like they're normal yes. and they can adapt maybe they're not that bad like they make them out to be but 
So you just see them like with their little animal there. And is it domesticated? Who, who, are, who are the ones like, because it's kind of probably like the age, right? Like the age. It's oh, Do you think it's like the older people that have pets or it was like all age different? No, it was all different. Ages. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it was all different. Ages. Yeah, like it didn't matter the age. Yeah. Like if you just see them, oh, shit, okay, this who has a little pet. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so did, did anybody offer you food? Were you allowed to take food? Things like that from them. So, no, absolutely not. You're not allowed to accept anything from from them at all. But it was just interesting to see all the stuff that they would cook. Tell me about the food. So they would make, like, brownies, cakes, um, tamales, uh, like, menudo. And some of these things smelled so good. Like, you're walking through and you're just like, what are you guys making in there? Yeah. What is? And they would show us like, oh, it's this, it's this. You want some? Oh no, thank you. It's okay. Like you <laughs> but know, I want some, but I can't. Like they would make candy. Like they would like melt down like I don't know stuff, mix stuff. Like they were good. Like you, the stuff smelled good. Some of the stuff didn't look too good, but it smelled good. It was just interesting. It was really interesting to see all the things they come up with. Um, did you have any, ever ever have any like drunk ass foods? Oh yeah, all the time, all Tell the time. Tell me about the drunk ass foods. <laughs> well, we basically you knew, um, so I don't know if you know, but so when they're brewing like their stuff, whatever the it Bruno? is, yeah, or the lightning, <laughs> yeah, white um, lightning, you could smell it sometimes. You could smell oh, it. Oh, it's strong. When they're still in the process of making it, because it takes days right i'm not mm -hmm. exactly sure how many days but i know it takes days it just depends how strong the kicker is yeah so so we would have like some of the officers that'd be like all right in a couple days they're gonna be drunk in a couple days we're gonna get them or we would walk by and the officers would be like hey i smell it like i'm coming for you when i get back so they would have to like move it around or put it somewhere else or whatever they were doing but you could smell it for the most part we knew who was who was gonna be next? Uh -huh. Like who was gonna be drunk? But for drunk like drunk people, we didn't have to go down there for them. It was just a ticket or whatever the officers would give them. It wasn't us unless it was. Did anybody ever really get bad. like food poisoning off that shit? Um, no, we never saw food poisoning, nothing like that. No, uh -huh. not at that time. No, no. What about in, I like visits? Oh, visits were interesting. Tell me about visits. <laughs> so visits were really interesting because um. You know, one weekend we would see them with a girl, a girl, whoever it was. And then the next weekend, it would be like another girl. So sometimes we would ask him like, hey, like, was that your wife or was that like your side piece? Or is that your Sancha? And he'd be like, shut up, shut up. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. And be like, so who is it? Like, it's not like she can hear oh, you. Like, yeah, that's that's my girlfriend. Okay. And then my wife comes on this day. My girlfriend comes on this day. And we'd be like, oh, my God, like, they don't know. They don't find out. So then we kind of knew, like, who it was. Because it was, like, the same people that we kept doing the same, you know, the same thing or whatever. So then um, sometimes with the nurses, we'd be like, oh, let's go give them their medicine when they're in visit. <laughs> just, just, so we can see who, <laughs> just so we can see who they're with today. So we would, you, you know, we down. would just try to have fun like that. You, you know, try to, to make the best of it. We were, we supposedly, you know, we were like 12 hour shifts but we were there for 15 16 hours sometimes wow yeah so i mean we had long days with the same people so we kind of got like it's you know like, had to make it fun no as no much no as it's like could. you're practically there you just yeah. go home to go sleep and come back mm -hmm. so you're doing and time again, too we were so short staffed it wasn't three days a week we were doing four days five days sometimes so then yeah you had to make the best of it we had to crack jokes as much as we could and and that's just how we made the time let's pass by, to, too. Let's go back to the visits. Let's go back to the visits. So when, let's just say, for example, like that one guy, right? That had the girlfriend and you were like, oh, let's go give him these pills or whatever. Like, and you guys would just look at them. They all know. And then, like, later on, they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're doing me dirty. Like, like you don't, right. you're don't right. do me dirty like that. And we're like, all right, we're, we're going to tell. Next time, we're going to say, hey, are you the white? Or, wait, no, you're not. Or, hey, this, like. Because after a while, you're working there, you get not comfortable because you can't bring your guard down. But you, you know, you start. Yeah, because it's not like um we were by ourselves. It's always with an officer, you know. It's always. And it wasn't just a nurse. It was like two nurses and then the officer. But it was just in conversation. Yeah, nothing. Was, yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. That's funny. And did you guys ever see like girl fights? Like no, visits? No. 
not in there. No. Mm-mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But I, but that was it. Like, I think they, they wouldn't schedule their visits at the same time. Like, however they did it, I wasn't sure exactly how, but it was one, one, one weekend, um, the next weekend, someone else. And then the next weekend, someone else. And it was just like that. Like, it was just Slurred a down, routine. Huh? It was just a routine. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. Yeah. But it was I interesting. Mean, they, they do it was they, interesting. They, they got to do what they got to do. Yeah. Like, how do you do it? Like, how do you keep up? But I mean, did. you know. They did. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't think it's that hard when you're in there. No, because they had nothing but time on their hands. Yeah. They had a lot of time, a lot of thinking, The you know, their processes. It was. Yeah, it they're was, good. That's what they yeah. do, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do feel that um, for like those guys that do that have like a lot of visits, like they come home and I think those are. I mean, I'm not judging. I'm not saying, but those are the ones that kind of come home and don't kind of get it together, because if they're not focused in there, they're not focused out here. But too, I think um, a lot of them were like lifers too. Oh, yeah, so they, they had get your money, guys. They had no, yeah, yeah, nothing to lose, yeah. you know, because they. Whatever they were like, whatever. Yeah, like bitch, you're gonna be there or you're not. Yeah, because the next one is coming in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's much. right. I mean, and hey, you gotta make your best out. You gotta make the best out of it and out of their time. Yeah, yeah. basically that's what they were doing. Yeah. And they had to go to like the vending machines and yeah. they would take pictures and yeah. things like that. Mm-hmm. And we were just right there looking at them. she's most awesome. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. But hey, I mean, it's, the mix. it's how it, it's how it is, you know. <laughs> what was the craziest? case that you've handled um let me see um okay so there was a a fight that broke out Uh, there's actually a few but this one was like a fight that had broke out between like the um uh i think it was like the mexicans and like in arizona they call them like the paisas the nationals Mm -hmm. and it was like a just like a riot between them but it was just between them um and they really like beat up this one guy but bad like his eye was like hanging out his head was cracked open. oh my goodness yeah so they they had to bring him up and we're basically like trying to put him back together like the eye yeah <gasps> we're basically putting them back together right there how did you feel when you were like oh my god was that like your first time you ever seen like an eye actually out i mean um, i've never seen that and i don't hope i never get to see i that. think so i think like for an eye to be popping out like that yeah and it, it's just pretty crazy but i mean it's one of those things like it's so fast. your adrenaline starts kicking in so fast and you can't really go wrong in that situation like all you could do is try to put everything back hold them back in peace like back in place or whatever so what you just put it back in yeah, and you like tie gauze. them yeah and we're trying to put gauze and we're trying to like put like um i remember like cleaning them up with saline and then just kind of trying to keep it moist like soaked in saline you know yeah and just trying to put it on so that the eye doesn't like dry out like we were just trying to figure things out at that on point. your own yeah mm-hmm. is there doctors there is but the doctors it's like a doctor's visit you know like you have to make an appointment uh, so like the doctor just... was only there like let's say for example monday wednesday friday so, and from this time to this time, this time to this time, it was just by appointments, basically. That's kind of whack, And we huh? would, like, line everybody up that had an appointment. They would come in for that. So, the doctor so everybody wasn't that put there. In the, so, everybody that put in the slip. Yeah. Got and it. And then you prioritize it and you see what's really mostly important to least important and things like that. So, there wasn't always a doctor there. It was only sometimes. It was ah. mostly us. Wow, mm-hmm. that's pretty intense. It was, it was pretty intense. And then the, after that, then I had this other guy. We didn't know what was wrong with him, but um, he was basically just kept going out on us, like coding on us. And I remember we ended up calling the paramedics, but the unit that I worked in was so far in, the paramedics wouldn't come in. We would have to drive them out to the front. Oh, so I remember um, there was a lot, I think it was, it had to have been maybe drug overdose because I remember there was a few people out. So... Some of the staff stayed behind, and I ended up getting in the van to transport him up to the front. And he, yeah, he kept coding on me, and I kept having to do CPR the oh whole God. way up. And I'm just doing CPR, CPR, CPR. And then once I got there, you know, like, you kind of hand off to the paramedics, and then that was it. And I remember, but they kept doing um, CPR. I don't remember whatever happened to him, but they ended up taking him out. Did you ever see, like... A few, like, overdoses, like, in one day, meaning they got a horrible-ass badge. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, we would... That's intense, huh? Like, yeah. imagine, like, well, I mean, not imagine, but, like, I could imagine. <laughs> like, you have, like, 
seven freaking inmates. We never had that many. I oh, think okay. the most of them might have been like two or three at a time. Okay, at a time. Yeah. Um, they had like rules. I don't know if I can say this. They had rules like the hours that we were working, they weren't allowed to be doing drugs. They had to wait until we no, would we, leave. We, we, you can okay. that. Yeah, you're okay. So they would have to wait till we would leave. So for the most part, we weren't supposed to be having, you know, emergencies like that. Okay. But we would here and there and they would get like, you know, whatever would yeah, happen yeah. to them afterwards. But they were not supposed to. Like they had hours of. Yeah, because they, they're respectful. Like the people that are, you know, like they're yeah. respectful. Like mm-hmm. this is their time. Like they, you want them to respect us and you need to respect them. Like, mm-hmm. so I, I do, I do, I do understand all of mm-hmm. that. But man, I guess there's always like them fuse that just. That they didn't listen. That or then their they addiction would, sometimes yeah. their addiction is and they would they would get in trouble after that for, yeah, for sure whatever you know but for the most part they weren't allowed to do anything while we were there ah. yeah that was the rules but it still happened but not as much ah. but we still had our our handful I'm sure mm-hmm. I'm sure yeah worst thing you you seen a staff get walked off on um bringing in drugs mm. um for the most part um. They would, like, put them in the food. Ah. Yeah. Like, in their burritos, in their lunch, whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, that's not too bad. It's pretty average. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah. That's you know, they got to work. Everybody has to, yeah. you know, there's, there's just how it goes. It's just, yeah. that, I don't think that's ever going to stop, you know? Yeah. Which is all. It's their little it's, side hustle. It's, you know, it's how it goes. <laughs> and there's, you know, I mean, I don't think they even want to try stopping it. They just... Do what they gotta do. It's 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 work. Yeah. It's work. <laughs> Everybody got to make money. Everybody knows, you know. Yeah, yeah. Even much. like this is like the higher people. They don't care about the guards. Yeah. Let's just be real. Like, they do not care about the guards. You know, I I had a guard. I I interviewed. Uh, his name is uh, I think his last name is Bravo. Hector Bravo. Um, he, that's like one of the main reasons why he left. He he was a lieutenant as well. And that's one of the main reasons why he left. He's like, it's not even because of the inmates, because the inmates are good. We're respectful. Like, it was because of the higher people. Yeah. You know, that don't care. Yeah. Which is understandable. Yeah, it is. F mm-hmm. them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know? Yeah. Any guards that you saw that try to take it far with the nurses, more than just flirting? Yeah, all the time. You would see them, you know... Did you ever experience anybody getting caught in action? Being handsy and... Like, why don't you guys just wait till you're out of freaking work, right? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, You did say that in the beginning. They could walk out. Like, walk out and do whatever they wanted. Like, why were they so thirsty just in to be, there? I think most people just wanted to be bitches to the, to the guys. But, I mean, it's not like... And this is the part where I didn't understand because it's not like the inmates would find out. It's not like they were doing it in front of them or they were doing it to show them. I think they just did it because it made them feel Only, oh, unless better, they were married, I guess. And shit huh? Oh, unless they were married, too. Oh, yeah. Most of them were married. Most of them were married. And they still were right there, you know, just trying to get at the nurses and in every way possible. And it's be like, come Sick on. Sick ass fools. Come on, guys. Like, we're just trying to do our job, too, you know? But, yeah, like, I, I mean, I guess if, if I was a nurse, which I'm not going to be right, but I'd be like, bro, get your f- shit right. Yeah. Like, kind of don't f- get off of me like like yeah. i feel like um like a nerd like i feel like i could see that you like hey bro my shit like you got to be aggressive with these fools and then the well and that that's I mean, not a thin aggressive. line though you know that was a thin line because you needed them when you came into a housing unit uh, when you needed yes. them to walk you Someone across get fired the yard on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting fired on the first day. So it was one of those things where you kind of had to keep it like as professional as you could without being rude, but you had to be firm. You had to, you know, be a certain way. But then, yeah, like I remember once, um, and this was here in California. This is like when I, because I also came back after it was when I came back and I have worked out here after that. So I had that situation (laughs) and um, yeah, I had this this officer and he just kept on me and on me and I would just try to brush him off because again, like you need them. Yeah, you need them to so do I'm telling you, their job, and um, <clears throat> I don't remember. Like he just kept saying, like, "Oh, maybe um, you want to go ride a motorcycle with me? You could ride on the back, or, you know." Just uh, then he just starts saying like things like that, and I was just so annoyed. And I was like, "Yeah, you know, it's just probably never gonna happen." 
I said it like that. And I don't know, maybe he got pissed because there was other people there. But he was saying it to me, too. Like, I'm kind of embarrassed and offended at the same time. Yeah, like, you're just So I kind of said that, like, said it like that, too. Like, hey, like, it's probably never going to happen. You know, and I think he got, like, butthurt or whatever it was, offended. And then after that, when I would come in, he wouldn't walk me. He would have someone else like come out of the bubble and then walk me. That's some or, lame shit. Yeah, him. he was just like rude after that and just kind of uh, standoffish. And I, not that I cared, but you know, you could just tell like bitch he boy. wouldn't like help me after that. And sometimes, you know, because they're busy too, they're in there doing their job. So we're coming into I'm the housing. <laughs> yeah, so we're coming into the housing units and we're we want to get done as soon as possible too. So we're coming in there like hoping, expecting like someone's gonna be like, oh hey, let me stop what I'm doing so I. Could help you know because for the most part that's how everybody was but now this guy was just like pretending like he didn't hear me he didn't see me like just rude after that and i didn't handle that shit (sighs) yeah so so i'm not mad for you i I would have taken off on the the guard before i took on the (laughs) it was annoying you know just to have to go through that it was like i said it was like on all ends of the situation because it was hard sometimes to get your job done because of things like that. Oh, that that's in, that's tough. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of nurses watching. To tell it. their stories because yeah. I'm sure my story is different than, you know, everybody's. Every single one. Everybody yeah. else's story too. Everybody has a story. Everybody's situation is different. different. Like I said, I worked a lot through agencies, through registries. It's different when you do work also through the state. Really? Through the facilities, yeah, because there's different rules. There's different, you know, you get different training. It's different. Everything is different. And every time you go into work, do you have to get searched as well? Or how does that work? So, yeah, you get searched just like the officers. You have to go through the scanners. They look, um, you can only wear certain colors. You can't just wear whatever color scrubs you want. What colors did you guys um, have to wear? I think here in California, I would wear gray and black because okay. I was like a safe color. Um, I remember wearing a sweatshirt one time and it was kind of like a teal green bluish I don't know something like that and it was cold cold I was working in Tehachapi where it's freezing cold Mm -hmm. and I had that sweatshirt on and um, they made me take it off they said I couldn't wear that color so you had to buy yourself like those nursing sweaters and nursing jackets or just wear something that's appropriate the color that's appropriate like you can't just walk in wear red or blue or I think yeah blue you can't wear blue because the guys were or orange, yeah. Okay. Things like that. You, you have to blend. You, you you can blend. Obviously, you can blend mm-hmm. in with the with them. Yep. And then the reason why they tell you that is because if there's like a an emergency and they have to start like shooting, like they're gonna see you, and if you're still standing, they're gonna shoot you. Yeah. Well, that yeah. Makes, I mean, that definitely. Makes yeah, sense. it makes for sense. your safety. Like, yeah, because I don't want to get confused. That's and that's what it is. They'll confuse you with the inmates. You don't want to get confused. And with your the shoes. Inmates. What about your shoes? The shoes. I don't remember them really saying anything about the shoes. Okay. Yeah. I want to say this because then I think of all the movies and like all the contraband, like, oh, okay, yeah. well, maybe they could put some things in their shoes. Oh, I mean, well, we had to take your shoes off. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. you take your shoes off. They look at your shoes, um, things like that. And yeah. You have to, can you take a regular backpack or does it have to be like the clear? Because you know, like the visits, like it depends. It depends. So the facilities were different, but they still go through your stuff. Got it, got it. They got still it. go through everything. And I mean, you don't bring in a lot of stuff. Like okay. you want to bring just like your necessities. And they have, you guys get lunch there or you no. have to bring your own lunch? We would bring our own lunch. Okay. I would bring my own. Lunch, yeah. yeah for the most part yeah oh and they um, would offer us lunch sometimes like if you you don't have a lunch like they would give you a lunch because you guys the uh, officers and the like the other workers not the inmates um you guys wouldn't have like your own like designated lunch area um no we did oh okay we like did. a cafeteria you yeah. know what i'm saying like okay you guys there's a people here come they're gonna cook i think we have like vending machines and things like that oh so but... basically you guys have to kind of like the same thing as the yeah. inmates yeah well, gee, thanks, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of things we couldn't bring. Like, you can't bring, like, a knife. You can't bring um, metal, silverware, mostly plastic or things like that. Oh. Yeah, that's what we did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nothing glass, things like that. Okay. Worst guard misconduct that you saw? Like, you got to mean, Misconduct? Right? From a guard. Like, the worst thing you saw, a, like, a guard behave a certain way or anything. Um, I don't know. No, no. They're always pretty, pretty. I'm all bashing the guards <laughs> today. <laughs> no offense, um, guys. <laughs> guards, I'm just you know, it's just one of them days. <laughs> um, I mean, they all. I think it just depends. Some of them are just like 
very flirtatious. I feel like that was no. The I don't only mean thing. like I don't mean towards you or towards the women. I just mean towards the inmates. inmates. Yeah. Because you're looking, I'm, you're you're a nurse, so you're yeah. looking at it in a whole different aspect as I mean, the guy, as uh, inmates and the guards. You're like you're there watching them, like. So I mean, like I think that's kind of like a difficult question to answer because yeah, like you saw some of them being really tough or very rough for no reasons. But see, I don't know that yeah, it was I for no reason. True. You know, like I wouldn't know. For all I know, they're just doing their job. For all I know, they were just something had happened prior that, that we never knew sense. about. But. That's as a good far way to as answer it, yeah, I because like I really, yes, <laughs> I might have to go back. Bro. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for the most part, yeah, I feel like they were probably just doing their job. I no, really most definitely can't really answer. For yeah, that. which is no, which is okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm neutral. I'm here. I'm doing my interviews. <laughs> it's what I do. You know, I, it's I feel like it's my place. It's, you know, to, yeah. to ask these questions mm-hmm. that people might want to know. You know, yes, at least me. <laughs> <laughs> all right well you say you might want to go back you're not a nurse right now um no i'm a nurse i just don't work no in you're prison. not a prison nurse mm-hmm. um yeah because once a nurse is always, a, you're nurse, always right? a nurse yeah um <laughs> is there anything else that you would want to share that you haven't shared that um just um let me see it was just interesting like because i see i see your videos and i see other videos of other people you know and um I just remember hearing, like, people, you know, their kites always, like, get taken away. I remember walking, you know, and you see the kites flying everywhere. And oh, wow. we, we would just jump right over them. We like nothing. It's not die. your place. It's not your it place. Yeah, place. that's right. And, Can you pass me this? And I'd be like, <laughs> and just keep going, hey, you know. I, you just be respectful to for everybody. For sure, because, hey, tried, they have a program yeah. that they're doing. And, mm-hmm. you know, you're just there to do your job. And mm-hmm. plus, if you stop ever, you know, stop, that's your head. Like, yeah. you know, you got to do what you got to do to yeah. be safe for yourself. So for sure, I get that, you know. I probably would have been doing the same thing. <laughs> I would have been fired my first day. <laughs> no, nah, I'm talking poop, obviously, you know. I, I'm just I'm just messing around. But, no, that that is, uh, that's, that's something to... Uh, interesting to see you know yeah and then we had this one guy um and he had been on like the first 48 really so then you know the officers are like oh you know go watch this go watch this when you go home and then i did so i saw i saw the the whole thing and then i came back and i was like oh my god and he's like that's not how it went because he had come up for something and th- with with the officers and it was just all in conversation but he was like that's not how it happened and we which is like, the one that he was sitting the one that got the one that snitched or the one that got caught no he's the one that did did the, it okay got it got basically it. told on himself uh, and, yeah. Yeah. that's kind of how it works how the first 48 yeah <laughs> yeah he pretty much told on himself and then he got locked up and that's the term he was doing at that time but i was just like he did what but yeah because it didn't match or something well it kind of did but it didn't match like his persona yeah yeah basically. that's what i meant yeah yeah basically that's what it was so that was kind of interesting um we had people that, that were like on gangland and things like that and we'd be like oh my god that's them can i have your autograph but we would. facts <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to but we never did yeah which yeah, is pretty so it was just, I, I think it's cool you yeah know? it was just a lot of interesting things like you meet a lot of people you never worked with women um, I did, but Tell just, me about the- just for a really short time, because um, I, I also worked at the, it was the county jail in Arizona, though, and um, I went through the, through the female, through the female I've jail. Been, I've been to Florence. Oh, have you? Yeah. I think that's where I was at. Yeah, I was, yeah. but I was at, I was at, at the, the federal. Uh, oh, okay, okay. The federal one, but it was in Florence. Okay. Yeah, so this was um in Phoenix, and um, it was just interesting. I think I was more scared then. Really? Yeah, because... Like, all the girls would just, like, stare at you, like, stare at you down, like... See what you're wearing? Things. Everything, like, everything. I think they're just, like, studying you, like, even more. I felt I felt it more. Really? Like, you feel it. Yeah, and, like, they would come up, and I remember, um, you know, because you give them, like, a certain amount of pads or tampons or whatever it was, so they were always trying to, like, one-up, like, well, can I have an extra one or can, you know, just to Well, you know we need you, more. <laughs> just to, like, test you, uh-huh. you know, and I'd be like, well, this is how many I could give you, and I'd just give them that. I'd be like, just come back, and I'll give you more, but I can only hand you this many. But they were just, it just felt like they were just testing you, really, every single moment they had, and then you would just... They had they would have a sitting like in their housing unit, so you would just see them how they would program, and it was just interesting. Completely to see. different from men. Completely different because 
they were all like grouped up like little families is what they would call it. They were all like little families, like mom, mom, and then kids, mom, mom, and kids. Like they were just all sectioned off. And yeah, yeah, it was crazy. And I don't know, different, completely different because the guys weren't like that. The no. guys are you know, way different. But with the girls, it was more like they were just like in little groups everywhere. And you, know, you would hear them start talking shit and, you know, but I never saw them fight. It was never like that. But they're just like arguments and just being really loud. And, you know, they would all come out with their makeup. They would ask me for tweezers. Can you bring me tweezers? Can you bring me this? I'd be like, no, I can't. Stop asking me. You know I can't. Yeah. But they're, you know, again, they're just trying to see what they could get. Of and course. How much further they can go and things like that. So but it was interesting. So d completely different, obviously. Yes, it was completely you different. Would, do you prefer working with women or with men? I wouldn't have mind working with the women. It was just interesting, just a different, mm -hmm. different um, environment. I think, um, to be honest with you, I felt safer as far as like the stab violence. Music. Yeah, yeah. As far as violence, that seemed it was like so much more mellow, uh, chill than with the guys, but. As far as like, I just felt like they were trying to like eat me with their eyes, like eat me up. I was just like, because it was like, it's with, with women, it's like being gay. It's like, yeah, basically, basically that's what they were just all very um, loving with each other. Very, <laughs> very <lo> <laughs> that's what it was. Like they were just very uh, good with each other. They took care of each other. Um, that's just what I noticed. Like they were just really good. Who's to each cleaner? Other. The girls. Yeah. Well. Mm. I think girls are dirtier yeah, than the guys yeah, yeah. for some no. like from all it the stories depends. that I hear, you it know, I, yeah, I feel like uh, the guys have a like stricter program like they on being do. cleaner and the girls some girls are just dirt bags. But then some guys too though, because uh, some guys are really dirty too. You would just walk by their cell and it smelled so bad. Ah. It was like a, a smell that you can never like it takes a long time to get out of your your nose. Like you feel like it's stuck on you. Oh no. Yeah, and I don't remember that with the girls. But again, the, when I worked with the girls, it was like a jail. So it was like a whole dorm Got it. that got we it. were in. Got it. it was never the prison. So it was got maybe it. that was the difference. Mm. It just seemed a little bit cleaner. Um, they made them be clean. The officers and everybody made them like Every, pick up after mm -hmm. themselves and stuff like that. So it was a different, that was like a different situation from the prison. The prison, you know, that was like their house, their home and it smelled okay, bad and sometimes. you like obviously you're doing the pill call and you're doing this is like the most important part to a lot of people that are in mm -hmm. there which one do you see like from women and you know just even if it's like your little short period of time like who wants more of pill call the guys got it yeah. yeah there was a lot of um like smi people so they were like mentally ill like got a it. lot of mental illness really yes how was it working with them, though? Like, you know, mentally unstable people. It's all, I mean, it's the same. It's the same. It's like scarier? Um, yeah, no, but I mean, yes, because you know. No, because you have to really see everybody the same. Everybody's the same. No, for sure, everybody's the same. But when it's like, okay, you see these normal ass fools, and then you see these people that are not mentally okay, like they really have mental problems, like, I feel like for me, I mean, I always say for me, because obviously I could only speak for me, like it would be more scary or like, ah, oh, you go, how do I do this? <laughs> but I mean, okay, so when we were down like doing pill call like that, it was still, they were behind uh, okay. their door, they're in their, oh. in their in their house. So it's not like so they, they were out walking with us or anything Got it, like got it, yeah. got it, got it. So maybe okay. that's what made, made it different. Like it was just the same to us because... It's not like they can come at us. Got it. Because there is a, a, a... I did have this one guy, though, that um, he was crazy, crazy. And we kept giving him his pills, and I don't know what he was doing with them. Like, I don't know. He was doing some crazy shit with them. Sniffing them, throwing them away. But he wasn't taking them. Like, he was really out there, like, jumping all over his cell. Like, he things. needed it. He needed them and wouldn't take them. And then, um, so this one time that I, okay, so then we had to call the doctor saying, hey, like, he's not taking his pills. Because um, it's supposed to be watch and swallow. So you're supposed to give them their pills, put them in their mouth, open uh, them, drink their water, swallow them. Like, that's the process. But for the most part, we didn't really do that because everyone wants their pills. Everyone's taking their pills. But then we would have a situation like this where now we're like, okay, we do have to watch you because you're not taking them. It probably court ordered or whatever it is. Um, so then we started crushing his pills and putting them in a, in his water. Now you have to 
uh, drink it. We have to watch you drink your water because that's the only way we're going to see you're taking your medication. And he got mad. He was mad, mad. He didn't want to do it. He was like yelling at us. And then I, I'm still walking. I'm with the officer. I'm still walking, but I kind of started walking ahead of him a little bit. So I'm here. The officer's here and we're facing him this way. I just saw him turn around like he had the cup in his hand, like he was going to swallow it. But I just saw him kind of turn around. He reached in his toilet and threw the water at us. <gasps> yeah. So that was pretty gross. Oh, yeah. And there's nothing like you could do. Like there's nothing you could. I mean, you go and wash yourself. Yeah. Like, ch- like try to take off whatever you could and oh, things no. like that. But then like th- when something like that happens, like it's a whole like incident report. And um, he got taken off the yard after that. Cause that's an, basically an like an assault, yeah. Oh my goodness! And it was on the officer and on myself. So that I was pissed because I was like, oh, like, what was in that water? Oh, like, yeah. I don't know what I got yeah. on me. So I'm like washing myself. But it was like already towards the end of the day, so I just got to go home. Oh well, good. You yeah. left early. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you: Did gross. you always have your tattoos? Um, like when you no. were working. Um, I always had tattoos, yes. Okay. Um, not like, I mean, your visible many. ones, you know? Yeah, I always had okay. tattoos. Yeah, they always, all the time, hey, I could do that for, like, 20 bucks. Like, I'll do it for cheaper. Yeah, okay, let me how just much, get in the sale. Yeah, how much did you pay for that? Like, I'll do it for 20 bucks. And I'll be like, oh, okay, thank you, but no, thank you. Things like that. But, yeah, they would always say stuff like, oh, you got more tattoos than I do. And, oh, who does your work? But, you know, when they're asking you that, they're just trying to figure out where you live ah yes where did you where did you get your work done who does your work when they ask you things like that they're literally just asking you what area you're at. where are you from yeah like where you live and things and like obviously that. they train you for oh all yeah of this. you're not you're not supposed to yeah. tell them any of any of that yeah. information yeah so i would be like oh yeah uh i have a friend i thought i'd tell everybody oh, i have a friend that tattoos me and that's just what i would say Oh, okay, that's... thank you but no thank you you yeah. know just gotta be still polite about it for but sure not give them any information because we did have we would have those new nurses that would come in and they would start conversating and oh yeah i live over here and i'd be like what are you doing girl shut up like why are you yeah so we would have to like take them back up and be like you cannot do that like you're putting everybody in danger when you tell them that because you never know you never know any anything that could happen to you after that so yeah wow they would have to get talked to (laughs) Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to share? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wait. The last one. No, I guess it's not. I was going to ask. A, did you ever see a nurse and an inmate get together and still work out after? No, no. I, ne- I never saw that. But I mean, I You've would. You've heard stories? Yeah, because we would have, like, inmates to, that would come up and they would say that they were with someone mm-hmm. that wasn't working there anymore or things, things like, like that. that. Yeah. That's pretty common. I feel like it's yeah. so common. It is. Right? It is common. All right. You would hear you would hear about it, but I never saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't want to see any of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Karen, thank you for coming on my channel, for telling me, thank telling you for us having me. <laughs> your experience being a prison nurse. You're the first one. Hopefully we get to have a, a few yeah. more nurses in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and again, thank you for coming. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram.